In this video, we will explore the fundamental concept of transforming a classical circuit representing any function into its quantum counterpart. Imagine we have a classical function denoted as f which takes n bits as input and generates m bits as output. We can represent this classical function using a classical circuit labeled as CF depicted in the following block diagram. Essentially, this classical function is equivalent to the classical circuit presented below. However, to convert this classical circuit into quantum circuit, we encounter a challenge. Classical circuits are generally not inherently reversible, while quantum circuit must be reversible to comply with the principle of quantum mechanics. Therefore, our initial classical circuit needs to undergo a transformation to become reversible. To address this challenge, let's explore a universal set of classical gates that includes AND and NOT gates. The universal set is termed universal because it allows us to construct any classical circuit using only these two types of gates. Note that the classical NOT gate already possesses the property of reversibility. For instance, consider the operation of NOT gate. When we input a 1, it produces a 0. And if we input this 0 through the NOT gate once again, it returns us the original input of 1. Similarly, if we initially input a 0 to the NOT gate, we can reproduce this input by applying another NOT gate in sequence. But there is a catch. The classical AND gate is not reversible. When it gives us an output of 0, it could have come from three different input combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. We cannot use the AND gate output alone to determine the exact original inputs. Thus, AND gate is not reversible. To create a reversible AND gate, consider the control swap gate. This gate takes three different inputs. Let's call them X, Y, and Z. In this setup, X acts as control bit for swapping. When X is equal to 0, it outputs X, Y, and Z in this order. However, when X is set to 1, it swaps Y and Z, producing an output of X, Z, and Y in that order. Now, to create an AND gate using the control swap gate, we set Z equals to 0. In this case, our first output will be X. The second output will be either 0 or Y depending on the value of X. Meanwhile, the last output will be the result of X and Y. We often refer to the second output as junk, which is a function of x. To verify if the third output is indeed x and y, let's create a truth table. Notice that when x is 0, our third output will be 0 regardless of the value of y. In contrast, when x is 1, 
our third output will be equals to y. Thus, our third output will be equals to 1 if and only if both x and y are 1, which precisely mimics the behavior of an AND gate. Now we have our universal set of classical reversible gates. We can create a reversible circuit for function f denoted as Rf using the reversible node and control swap gates. The input for circuit Rf will be x along with some zeros. The output will consist of x, f of x and what we have been referring to as junk, which is also a function of x. This junk can be problematic. If we convert a classical reversible circuit with this chunk into a quantum circuit, let's call it QF, the junk could become entangled with the output causing either positive or negative interference. This unintended entanglement and the resulting interference can lead to incorrect output and measurement results for the circuit. Therefore, we must modify our classical reversible circuit to eliminate this chunk to ensure the quantum circuit functions correctly. In our redesign process, to eliminate the junk, we feed the output of our classical circuit RF into its inverse. Thus, converting the output back to the original input. We have successfully got rid of the junk. Yahoo! However, this process has also eliminated f of x. To preserve the value of f of x, we introduce control not gates. We use the output of f of x as the target and the input y as the control bit. This modified circuit produces the following outputs. Input x, f of x XORed with y and a series of zeros. This newly modified classical circuit now produces our desired output and eliminates the junk. It is safe to convert this classical circuit into quantum circuit for further processing. Now our quantum circuit QF will take following inputs cat x, cat y and a series of zeros. The resulting output for this quantum circuit will be cat x, cat of f of x, xor with y and a series of zeros. For simplicity, we can omit mentioning the zeros both at the input and the output, focusing on the primary component of the quantum circuit. Let's clarify our concept with some examples. 